Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Explain This. I'm with the star of the show, Robin Riddle. Robin, it's so nice to be in person today. I know. It's been a while. It's a new year. We're, we're in person. <laughs> like, I'm energized. I'm ready to go. Awesome. <laughs> so we're, we're on another episode of Explain This, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a supplement that we get tons of questions about because yeah. uh, there's a lots of different types of it. Yes. And that is magnesium. Robin, you're going to explain the different types of magnesium for us Yes, today. absolutely. So we do get lots of questions about this because it can be very confusing. You go to the drugstore and there's 10 different types of magnesium in your face and you have no idea what any of them do or how to choose between them. Um, so first of all, why do we need magnesium to begin with? Um, magnesium is involved in over 600 processes in the body. It is a chemical messenger that's in all of those. Um, so some things that it can help with thyroid function, it helps to balance with hormones, helps to stabilize blood sugar levels, helps to balance cortisol levels, can help increase serotonin and improve mood, mm. can help regulate blood pressure, it can decrease the risk of heart disease, it can help improve sleep, regulate our gut function, improve brain health, I can go on and on. <laughs> um, it's involved in everything. So we need magnesium. Um, you do get magnesium through foods. Um, so, you know, foods that are rich in magnesium are things like seaweed, chocolate, cashews, um, your dark green leafy vegetables, brown rice, bananas, avocados, things like that are going to have a lot of magnesium in them. Um, if you're eating any processed foods, most of them are going to be fortified. So bread, cereals, things like that, they're mm -hmm. going to put magnesium in it as well. But even with all that, sometimes we don't absorb it the way that we should. Sometimes we can have some deficiencies. Um, so symptoms of low magnesium can be things like muscle pain, um, headaches, fatigue, depression, anxiety, insomnia, constipation. Those can all be things that could indicate that we have a magnesium deficiency. Can you check a magnesium level? Is that something? It's not super accurate. Okay. You can. Okay. Um, we do it on our Cleveland. So okay. the Cleveland panel gets a RBC magnesium level. That's right. Um, but th the way that magnesium is bound up in the body, doing a blood level of it, of it is not always the most accurate. So you mainly want to go by the symptoms you just talked about. Yeah. If okay. we have those symptoms, we take magnesium, we have symptom relief. That's what we needed. Um, <laughs> so that's when we start to look to magnesium supplements. Um, all the magnesium supplements are created by taking magnesium and attaching it to different either amino acids or organic acids. That way the body will recognize it and absorb it. So depending on what acid it's attached to, that's what changes the main function of Ooh. that type of magnesium. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So I'll go through some of the most popular ones and kind of clarify the best things to use them for. Okay. Um, first, there is magnesium glycinate. This is bound to the amino acid glycine. Glycine is known to help with mood. So magnesium glycinate is great for daily supplementation. Um, it's going to help sleep, so it's a great one to take at bedtime. It's going to help with mood. Um, this one is the least likely to have any unwanted GI side effects because magnesium definitely can do that for some people. Okay. So the way that this one is bound and absorbs in the body, not super likely to cause any gut stuff that we don't want happening. Um, general dosing on this one, anywhere from three to 500 milligrams a day. You can increase that in times of stress when we know that there's going to be more anxiety or more sleeplessness, things like that. We can bump that up a little bit. Okay. But yeah, magnesium glycinate, sleep, mood. And just because I know this is the most important thing, it's glycinate, not glycinate. Glycinate. Gly See, I've been saying glycinate. Well, there we go. Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> glycinate. That's how I say it. <laughs> um, the next one is magnesium malate. Okay. We don't hear about this one as much, but this one is bound to malic acid. Malic acid is important because that's an organic acid that is used in the energy production process in the cells. So malic acid is part of what the whole Krebs cycle, ATP production, all the stuff in the cells that produces energy. So in binding this magnesium to malic acid, creating magnesium malate, it helps with energy. This is a great one for fatigue. Um, this one can be very stimulating. It's not one to take at bedtime because you may lay there awake all night. Um, so this is one that's really good for fatigue and also for pain. Um, they do, they have researched using this in fibromyalgia to help with pain. Uh, again, most of these are going to be somewhere between three to 500 milligrams a day would be the recommended um, dosing okay. on it. And this is one that you take in the morning or around lunchtime because of that stimulation effect. 
Interesting. I was going to ask you about the timing because you hear magnesium take at night, yeah. but these, these <laughs> different uses, you know, Depends somebody, on the kind you're taking. <laughs> somebody takes magnesium malate at night, that yep. could be... You're uh, going to be awake all night and be <laughs> like, why didn't that magnesium work for me? <laughs> yep, that's why. All right. Um, then we have magnesium chorate. This one is bound to the amino acid taurine, which is known to help with um, circulation, GABA production, things like that. So magnesium taurate is really beneficial um, for one reducing cortisol levels, um, increases production of GABA, um, which is a neurotransmitter that we really need, helps to increase circulation, improves blood pressure, also can help to help to slow the production of cataracts. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So magnesium taurate is the one that I'm going to put people on if they have high blood pressure. If we're worried about any kind of circulatory issues, heart disease issues, things like that, this is the one that's going to have the most benefit there because of that amino acid taurine in it. When I think of magnesium, I do think that calming effect. Yeah. Or, it, I think it should lower blood pressure. So yeah. this is the one that... This is the one that's going to be most specific to that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Super interesting. Uh, again, three to 500 milligrams a day, recommended daily amount. Um, then we move on to magnesium citrate. This one uh, is very useful for gut stuff. Okay. So this one's for constipation. Um, it can help pull water. So it's not a highly absorbed type of magnesium, but it gets into the gut and it pulls water into the gut. Okay. So that's why it helps with constipation. So we get water into the gut. We help to relieve constipation. This is the one that if you take too much of it, you're going to know and you're going to know really fast because um, you're going to be in the bathroom for a while. Um, it does have a major laxative effect. So you can get liquid magnesium citrate over the counter and that's what the GI doctors have their patients take to prep for um, colonoscopies. They do bowel prep with it. Interesting. Is that as good as like a fi like just fiber, like Metamucil or something? Different. Okay. Just so like fiber different. is going to help with bulk formation. Magnesium citrate is literally getting that fluid into the gut to help things move along faster. Got it. So okay. you can do low daily dosing of this, again, around that 500 milligram mark, just to keep... Um, a little bit in the system to help with chronic constipation, just help keep things a little bit more regular. Got it. Um, but if you go pick the liquid up and you drink half a bottle of it, you're going to be in the bathroom for the rest of the day. Um, so you do have to be careful with this one. Yes. Don't overdo it. <laughs> <laughs> um, then there's magnesium L3 and 8. Okay. This one's really unique because this is the only type of magnesium that can cross the blood brain barrier. So we're affecting what the brain here. So it's the barrier that's around the brain, the blood brain barrier that okay. keeps um, things going through to the actual brain circulation. So like a psychoactive effect. Yeah. So it actually of. acts on the brain. This is the only type of magnesium that can do this. Everything else, the blood brain barrier blocks it and keeps it out. So it's not actually getting to have any kind of cognitive effects. Interesting. But magnesium L3 and 8 gets through that blood brain barrier. So we get a lot of beneficial neuro things out of this. Improved memory memory, improved cognition. Um, the one that we carry here in the office is Life Extension's Neuromag. And in their research, they've actually shown slowed cognitive decline with this and actually even reversal of some cognitive decline. So Interesting. It's great for the brain. Um, love this one. Uh, anytime that I have people worried about Alzheimer's, dementia, anything like that, magnesium L3 and 8 is something that I'm always talking about. W would you use it ever for like focus as like a substitute for? It can help. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it can help. Um, yeah, so that one's awesome. Um, then your lesser known one. So there's magnesium lactate. If you're looking on ingredients in a lot of processed foods, that's the type of magnesium they're going to put in there to fortify with. Okay. It's not one that I recommend getting in pill form and taking. We're not getting a lot of benefits out of it. Okay. Um, magnesium chloride. This is going to be one that's going to be really beneficial for bone health. So a lot of times if you have like a bone restore type supplement, they're going to put a little bit of that that type of magnesium into those supplements. So you you've said two things that have caught my caught my attention here. Yeah. You said Neuromag and then you said Bone Restore. Both are Life Extension brand. They are. So I'm kind of assuming that a lot of these magnesiums are parts of vitamins. Is that right? Most of your vitamins, any multivitamin is going to okay. have magnesium in it, but there's a lot of vitamins that are going to have a little bit of magnesium in them. Okay. okay. So if you're ever looking to add on additional straight magnesium, always look at what you're already getting. We want to make sure that we're not getting too much of things. Okay. Um, but yeah, so they'll have a little bit of magnesium in that. Um, magnesium chloride also can be done topically and used for muscle cramps, pains, things like that. 
Interesting. Um, then there's magnesium oxide. So this converts into magnesium hydroxide when you take it. So those two are, I use those interchangeably, oxide okay. and hydroxide. Um, this is what's in milk of magnesia. So oh, milk okay. of mag, um, it is not a well-absorbed type of magnesium. It's not the kind of magnesium you want to take for supplementation to get your blood levels up. This is just something that's beneficial for heartburn, reflux, getting the stomach kind of calmed down. Okay. Coats okay. the stomach really good. Um, but very, like I said, very poorly absorbed, not something that we're using on a daily basis. Okay. Uh, and then another type is magnesium sulfate. This is also known as Epsom salts for athletes. Oh. Yeah. So a lot of people will do Epsom salts baths. That's a derivative of magnesium sulfate. Interesting. So in that salt form, you know, you put it, it's great for sore muscles and things like that. Um, my background with it, of course, I was a labor and delivery nurse for 10 years. So I always think of magnesium sulfate for preeclampsia, seizure prevention, and for preterm labor because it's relaxing muscles. Mm. So. Super interesting. Yeah. There, like, there's so many different types of magnesium. Yeah. I can see, like, how uh, a lot of people watching might be <laughs> like, well, like, four or five of them make sense for me. Yeah. How do you coach people to choose which ones to use? How long? Is it just till the symptoms are gone? I like to switch it up. Have okay. a couple different types of magnesium. Okay. I don't want you taking five different types of magnesium every day because we definitely can get too much of it. Mm. Um, but switch it up. You know, use some glycinate at, at, at bedtime for sleep a couple nights. Um, you know, if you know we're worried about cognition, throw in some L3 and 8 a couple days a week. Just yeah. mix things up. Super interesting. Well, Robin, thank you for explaining yeah. magnesium to me. I had no idea there was that many. <laughs> so, guys, I'm going to encourage you to rewatch this video and go over all the different types of magnesium because I know it's a big question that we get in office as well as on some of our other shows. So rewatch this and uh, figure out for yourself which one works best for you and go from there. Robin, I appreciate you. Absolutely. Guys, this has been Explain This. You name it, we explain it. I'm with the star of the show, Robin Riddle. As always, we'll see you guys next time. Don't go away.